Hello and welcome to the official Wrestle News 365 YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining us on here today. So, of course, we're going to talk about what everyone is talking about in the professional wrestling world right now, and that is AEW Revolution. AEW Revolution uh, was in Chicago, Illinois last night for AEW's first pay-per-view event of 2020, their first event since Full Gear in November last year. And the main story, of course, coming out of that event was that we have a new AEW World Champion. John Moxley defeated Chris Jericho, defend, uh, defeating uh, Le Champion and ending his championship reign, in, uh, ending the inaugural champion's championship reign. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today, the reaction to that, what I think is going to happen going forward, um, the match quality, all of that good stuff. We'll also do a couple more uh, videos about AEW Revolution that we'll put out um, later on in the week. Uh, instead of doing like a full, you know, pay-per-view review, I feel like it's better just to do these sort of bite-sized chunks about the matches or the major talking points coming out of the pay-per-views. Do something a little bit different, you know. So, like I said, John Moxley defeated Chris Jericho, new AEW World Champion. In terms of the match quality itself, um, I thought the match was fine. It wasn't exactly a classic, in my opinion. Um... I felt that the crowd uh, felt quite tired and quite flat. I mean, at that point, the show kind of went off the air at about 11.30 Eastern time, and it started at, gosh, uh, 7.30 if you count the pre-show. So it was like a four-hour show. So um, regardless of uh, of how good the quality of the show is or the wrestling is, when you get to that main event segment and uh, or main event match and it's four hours in the, the crowd's tired especially if there have been good matches prior to that which was um which was the case also because you had the likes of the tag team championship match which was an absolute classic you also had uh, the pack versus orange Cassidy match which while the match wasn't a classic the crowd was certainly into it and reacting very 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 loudly so when it comes to the main event itself and that pack orange Cassidy match was actually prior to the main event so when it gets to the main event itself the crowd was a little bit tapped out I felt and was a little bit uh, a little bit tired a little bit flat and I felt that that kind of hampered the match a little bit um, so it wasn't obviously the best match of the night that was easily the tag team match not to say that it was a bad match though the match was absolutely fine um, the finish itself so we had in the match it was uh, a bit more of a brawl than a match and that is yeah, almost a typical Moxley match at this point, isn't it? This new John Moxley in comparison to the Dean Ambrose we used to see in WWE. Uh, but obviously the story going into the match was that Chris Jericho had, uh, blinded Moxley in one eye. Moxley had the eye patch on. And during the match, Chris Jericho got some colour on John Moxley, um, getting some retribution for busting him open on Dynamite last week. So Moxley had the blood around his face. And you would assume, or you did assume, that that was... Uh, due to the eye injury and Chris Jericho had re-aggravated the eye injury. That wasn't the case. Uh, as they, But when they get to the end of the match, John Moxley reveals that he can indeed see. He pulls off the eye patch. He can see fine with both eyes. His eye has recovered. Uh, this then sets up uh, Moxley to hit Jericho with the paradigm shift. Not once, but twice. He hits one paradigm shift and then like an elevated paradigm shift that he does uh, to get the victory. Um, so, yeah, that, that makes uh, John Moxley your AEW world champion. Uh, but then after the match, he cut a promo, which was clearly a promo that, obviously, AEW doesn't do scripts in their promos anyway. But I don't even think there was bullet points. I think John Moxley was just told, you know, say how you feel. And it did come across as that. It came. He stumbled on his words a little bit. I mean, you can hardly blame him. He just wrestled a 20, 25 minutes world championship match. And has really turned his career around. If you think about where he was this time last year, I think he was jobbing to Elias on Raw and all of that stuff. Um, fast forward a year, what talk about a 180. He's not only the AEW World Champion, but he's also the um, IWGP United States Champion in New Japan. So talk about a career turnaround and creatively fulfilled and just generally being happier with his career his passion and love for pro wrestling is obviously back and that came across in the promo I think the funny bit that people will mostly remember is that he was going on about he's you know it wasn't about him this was a win for the fans you know typical babyface promo and um, basically saying I'll take on all comers and they kind of, uh, the production team trying to sort of essentially play him off a bit like they do in the Oscars they played his entrance music and Moxie was like, what the F? He literally dropped an F-bomb. I know it's live on pay-per-view. They can do whatever they want. But it just, 
it makes me laugh when you see stuff like that and then people still on social media will say well they'll have creative freedom to a certain point john moxley is not dropping f-bombs on wwe pay-per-views i think he would get heavily fined um which obviously isn't the case here so it's stuff like that's just always nice to see it's different um like i said the promo was fine it wasn't anything to write home about it was just to you know capture or perfectly put the cherry on top of his championship celebration which i'm sure we'll also see um on aw dynamite this week um in terms of ending chris jericho's world championship reign for me, I would have preferred that Chris Jericho remain world champion for the least for a couple more months uh, until maybe double or nothing in May. Um, the only reason I say that is just because for me, Jericho has been the most entertaining thing on Dynamite every single week. Um, his whole Le Champion character, a little bit of the bubbly, the, his whole world champion persona and being part of the inner circle for me has been the best thing in AEW bar none obviously we've had some moments from other people here and there but consistently every single week Chris Jericho has knocked it out of the park and just talk about career uh, renaissance at the age of 49 he's probably for me doing his best work he's ever done and is consistently entertaining and he, he just gets it and I would have really liked to see more of that I felt like there was more legs in his championship reign there was more that they could do and like I said, I thought that they could have carried this out to double or nothing. Um, and I thought there was more that Chris Jericho could do as the world champion. Maybe a couple more guys he could face or make as world champion. But I also said on the flip side of that, that I felt that there were only two guys that could take the championship off of Jericho and still be at that high level. Or they were over enough as baby faces to legitimately take the championship off of Chris Jericho. Uh, one being Cody Rhodes, which they could have done that at full gear. It would have been very, very premature, but they could have done it because Cody's arguably a more over babyface than even John Moxley is at this point in AEW. I mean, the crowd is just completely in love with him. And we will touch upon Cody Rhodes' new tattoo uh, in a later video this week or so. I'm sure everyone has their thoughts about that. Well, if social media is to be believed, everyone hates it. But we'll get on about that at uh, another point. Uh, but the other guy I said that could potentially take the championship off of uh, Chris Jericho, who was over enough, who could legitimately carry the ball, if you put it that way, uh, would be John Moxley. He's that uh, over baby face. The crowd loves him. Um, he's not. He does not feel like he's no longer tainted by the WWE-ness. This John Moxley is completely different to Dean Ambrose in WWE. They're almost like two different people at this point. Uh, but John Moxley consistently gets the some of the loudest reactions every single week. I'm sure he t sells a ton of merch. Otherwise, they wouldn't put the belt on him. Um, his entrance through the crowd is awesome. The crowd loves it. His music is great. The ring entrance by Justin Roberts when he comes out is great. He truly does feel like a big star. And like I said, he's legitimately over. He's got name value, name recognition value. He obviously draws in his segments uh, in the ratings. So he's an over enough baby face that you could legitimately say, OK, he could be a world champion. And of course, now he is the world champion. Um, it also makes sense from a Chris Jericho scheduling point of view that he were to drop the world championship as uh, the Fozzy Tour or another Fozzy Tour. Chris Jericho's band, of course, starts in April. So that would explain why he's dropped the bout now. Obviously, the next pay for you is Double or Nothing, which is in May. So the Fozzy Tour will be in full swing by them. They also could have done it at the uh, special dynamite that they have it in March in New Jersey, which is called Blood and Guts. Obviously, a nice nod to Vince McMahon's comments that he made about them last year. Uh, we'll also touch upon that whole event or special themed edition of Dynamite in another video. Um, and Chris Jericho also did say, I mean, we should have really seen it coming, that he always has said in interviews, even going back as far as November or October last year, he said, I know what I'm doing until February. We we're in February, or we were in February at the last night, obviously the leap year, the 29th. Um, so I would assume that this has always been planned for a while. It was always the plan for Chris Jericho to drop the championship in February at the pay-per-view in February, which was AEW Revolution. Maybe they didn't know exactly who he was going to drop it to. Maybe Moxley um, wasn't initially planned. I don't know. I don't have any inside information on that. Uh, but it would appear that Chris Jericho, was the plan was always for him to drop the championship in February because he was going on tour because he had other things to do. And Chris Jericho was always right to be the first AEW world champion. The prestige he has, um, how over he is, it just makes all sense. It just makes all sense. 
Um, I suppose the interesting thing about it now that we've had two AEW World Champions is that they are two former WWE guys. Um, the criticism of TNA, wasn't it, that um, only the big or former WWE or WCW guys got the push and they didn't create any homegrown talent. I don't think that's the case with AEW. Um, the AEW is certainly putting the spotlight on guys that haven't been on WWE TV or are very not as known for, for WWE TV runs or anything like that. And at this point, it's probably too early to put it on an AEW guy. I mean, who could you can realistically say as an AEW guy um, is worthy of being the world champion at this point? Cody Rhodes, regardless of what people say, obviously now I could probably consider him to be an AEW guy, but he's got that WWE history, doesn't he? Um, Kenny Omega is one that obviously the only WWE history, uh, history he has was from developmental way back in the day. He could be a guy that you could legitimately say is an AEW guy, but I would still consider him to be a New Japan guy. Obviously, his history is there. Um, so maybe it's too early to put it on an AEW guy, a proper homegrown talent we haven't seen anywhere else. Um, so I don't I don't necessarily uh, latch on to that argument of, oh, they're gonna doing the same thing as TNA and WCW, just going for former WWE guys. You know, you've got to remember, WWE has been really the only show in town for however many years. At some point, everyone has gone through WWE, and at some point, most people will. So it's that argument is almost a bit redundant at this point. But now that Moxley is the world champion, I suppose there is a question of who does John Moxley face next. Now I had a little bit of a look at the current AEW roster. Um, and I questioned whether there was a real abundance of heels that could legitimately challenge him for the AEW World Championship. And then I sort of realised that it doesn't really matter, I suppose, if they're heels or babyface. John Moxley as a character is almost um, a heel babyface. He's a bit of a, of a Steve Austin where a lot of his actions could really be construed as heelish moves. But because he's so over, because he's so rebel against authority, um, his actions... Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's facing a heel or baby face. Moxie will get cheered anyway. A bit like when he faced Kenny Omega earlier this year and he had that feud with him. They were both baby faces, but it didn't really matter. And I think that would be the case going forward with John Moxie's World Championship feuds. So who could he face legitimately for the net, for the AEW Championship in the future? Well, let's go through some names who I think could be potentially facing him. Uh, first of all, the first name that comes to my mind is Lance Archer. Now, we know that he signed a contract with AEW. He's going to make his AEW de uh, debut this week on Dynamite. And they have history, Archer and Moxley. Uh, Lance Archer was the uh, New Japan United States champion. Uh, John Moxley was the former champion. He had the title vacated because he couldn't travel to Japan to defend it because of a, uh, a, was it a typhoon or something like that. Uh, Lance Archer became the United States champion. And then Moxley challenged him. They had a unbelievable match at Wrestle Kingdom earlier on this year and then uh, with Moxie winning and becoming the United States champion once again so they have a history they have great chemistry they have the story that they could tell Lance Archer could interrupt Moxie's celebration this week on Dynamite and then you're off to the races uh, for that feud is Lance Archer credible enough to be um, challenging for the AEW World Championship I don't know I don't know. He obviously doesn't have the massive name recognition value in the mainstream United States audiences, but I don't think AEW really cares. I think they just care about quality of the feud and quality of uh, the matches and the promo. So there's certainly a potential there, and it depends how hard they want to push Archer. And realistically, it depends if they want to put Archer in that position straight away. I mean, you have to think, if Archer's coming in to face Moxley, it's highly unlikely that Archer's going to win the World Championship. So you're going to be looking at an early loss there for Lance Archer. Do you really want to put in a new high-profile talent in that position where he's booked to lose quite early on in his career, especially in a company like AEW where wins and losses do go on your record, so they do matter? Um, maybe they save that feud for a bit later on down the line. Um, another person he could face could be MJF. Now, we saw MJF beat Cody Rhodes last night at AEW Revolution. Of course, he's probably up there with Chris Jericho now as the one of the top heels in the company, certainly in terms of having heat from the crowd. Um, he absolutely has a ton of heat at the moment. 
I'm not sure MJF will challenge John Moxley next for the championship as I, there's still a lot more to do with that Cody Rhodes feud. That match they had last night isn't the last match between them. Um, I still do think they're going to have a big gimmick match some point down the line and that's going to settle the feud. And the way that MJF beat Cody Rhodes last night, hitting him with the Dynamite Diamond Ring, it ends in a bit of a controversial finish. So Cody Rhodes has something else up his sleeve and they'll have another match later on down the line, I think. And I think that would be a gimmick match. So I, I would, I could easily see MJF slotting straight into face Moxley. It would be a, certainly an interesting feud to do. Two contrasting characters. MJF has the momentum, certainly. Um, but I just don't think that it will be right now. But I think that could happen later on down the line. Now, obviously, he could have a rematch, John Moxley, against Chris Jericho for the AEW World Championship. I'm not too sure if they will do that, though. They seem pretty intent on having uh, the AEW rankings, which we'll get onto in a minute, uh, in terms of uh, deciding who the next challenger is going to be for the World Championship. And I'm not sure AEW is going to go down the road that WWE used to go down to, uh, and which WWE still does today, even though they say they don't, which was as soon as you lose, you get a rematch. Um I think at this point in professional wrestling, that's become a bit of an eye roll. That's a bit of lazy storytelling of, oh, we can do a rematch. That's just dragging things out for the sake of dragging things out. And I don't think AEW is going to want to do that. So I don't think an a, a rematch between Chris Jericho and John Moxley happens right away. Um, I could be wrong. I would suspect with uh, the tour coming up with Fozzie that Chris Jericho may take some time off anyway just to refresh reinvent himself um once again come back as something different i don't know maybe chris jericho will be on tv still every single week but i don't think they'll go straight into a chris jericho rematch perhaps they do on a on an episode of dynamite but not the long-term feud for the next pay-per-view or the next special edition of dynamite i just don't see that happening now another guy that john moxley could face for the AEW world championship could be darby allen uh, we know that John Moxley is a big, big fan of Darby Allen. He said this in multiple interviews that he'd really like to work with him more. He really enjoyed working with him when they had that match on Dynamite. Uh, was it earlier this year or last year? They had a tremendous match. Moxley dropped um, Darby Allen with the paradigm shift from like the top rope or the second rope or something like that. It looked great. Um, so we know Moxley is a big fan of him. We know that Darby Allen is super over with the audience. Um and their chemistry is great in the ring. So Darby Allen could easily slot in, in there. My worry with that would be that Darby Allen has lost quite a few big matches. You know, he's lost to Chris Jericho. He's lost to John Moxley. He's lost number one contender matches. Similar to my argument about the whole The Fiend and Bray Wyatt situation where when stars are on the ascendancy to the top, they need to continuously win matches. If you start to lose big matches over and over and over and over again, you get worried or I get worried that the casual viewer views them as someone who can't win the big matches and therefore they're not as invested in them, in them as they could be. So maybe you don't want to put Darby Allen in that position just yet, but he could certainly be a credible contender for John Moxley for the AEW World Championship. Now, another person that could potentially face John Moxley could be Pac. Pac beat Orange Cassidy last night in one of my favorite matches from the show. Uh, last week, he was the ranked number three contender in the AEW male rankings. Um, so they could certainly tell that story from that point of view. Um, and I think I think a pack John Moxley feud could definitely work. It would appear that after the Orange Cassidy uh, stuff last night, and since he's finished his feud with Kenny Omega now after having that Iron Man match last week, that Pac sort of left in the wilderness here. He hasn't really got anyone to face for the time being. So Pac could easily slot in there. Now, I know what some people are going to say, well... He lost to Kenny Omega last week in the Ironman match. Why would he be worthy of a world championship uh, opportunity? Well, he won his match at the pay-per-view. So that could obviously help that win-loss record out. And let's be honest, he lost to Kenny Omega in overtime last week. So in the regulation, 30 minutes, it was a draw. So looking back on it now, you could easily say, well, maybe they were protecting him for the future John Moxley feud that was coming up between them. And I'd certainly like to see Pac get an AEW World Championship shot. I think his heel character is great. Obviously, his work is fantastic. Um, and I think a John Moxley Pack feud could be certainly very entertaining. Now, the critics of having Chris Jericho versus John Moxley saying, well, that's an ex-WWE match, would say the same thing here of, well, Pack versus John Moxley is an ex-WWE match, only the ex-WWE guys are getting in the main event. 
that's bullshit for me. That that's just a load of rubbish. I wouldn't pay any of attention to that. I think Pack is certainly a credible person that could face John Moxley, and certainly with it seeming like he doesn't have anyone to face now, he could uh, really do with having a, a good long feud. Finally, the last person he could potentially face, he being John Moxley, is of course Kenny Omega. Um, they had their feud uh, when Dynamite first launched. They obviously, they were meant to have the match at All Out. They didn't have it because Moxley was injured. They eventually had that just brutal lights out match at, at full gear. And post that match, after Moxley won, they showed the, um, or they tried to tell the story on uh, Dynamite that Omega sort of really struggled to get over that loss and really struggled to, you know, move on essentially. And he said that uh, he was disappointed that moxie recovered so quickly he was disappointed that he lost and the kind of the 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 note they left it on at that point was maybe we'll face each other again one day that was the thing that they sort of hinted at now i've said for the longest time that i thought if john moxie did win the championship last night at revolution which he did of course that i thought that they would have the moxley versus omega rematch at double or nothing for the aw world championship i still think that's very uh, that's very highly likely to happen the little wrench that's been thrown into that one is that uh, last night, Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page retained the Tag Team Championship. Now, that doesn't completely kill off this idea because I think potentially this is where a few stories here could merge. Now, they teased last night Hangman turning on Kenny Omega, but they also teased the Elite turning on Hangman. So we're not really sure where that one's going to go. We'll go into that in a later video. But... Uh, potentially you could have Kenny Omega become the number one contender for the World Championship, face John Moxley at uh, Double or Nothing, and then in that main event you have the turn of Hangman on uh, on Kenny Omega. He becomes that big heel, which I'm not really sure I think is the best move for Hangman. I mean, it's a side point, but I think Hangman is way over as a babyface right now. This sort of darker drinker, doesn't care about anyone, a uh, bit of a loner. I think it would be silly for them to turn hangman heel i think the best move is to turn kenny omega and the young bucks heel which maybe could tie in to this uh, moxley feud if they did pull it off they could have omega and the bucks turn on hangman the bucks become tag team champions then you have the heel kenny omega challenge uh, the babyface john moxley at double or nothing that's the story that i'd like to see out of all of those lists that, that's the one that i'd really like to see but what about you who do you think should challenge john moxley next for the aw world championship what did you think of the show last night what did you think of the john moxley versus chris jericho match and do you think chris jericho should have lost his world championship should it have lasted a little bit longer or was it the right time Time for the champion to drop the championship belt let me know in the comment section below don't forget to smash that like button share it to all of your friends and be sure to subscribe to the wrestle news 365 youtube channel we really do appreciate it the subscription number is rising every day it's awesome to see and i really 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 appreciate all of your support thank you very much for watching listening streaming or however you've come across this video today and i'm sure i'll speak for you again very very soon